Hey everybody, this is Steve Moore, owner of Run More, this gorgeous brick and mortar running shop located in Westminster, Maryland. Uh, today I'm here doing a review on a very dirty shoe. This is the Hoka Zanal. Uh, this came out in early July of 2021. You know, usually when you see me up here doing these shoe reviews, I have these nice, pretty clean shoes in front of me. Um, I kind of purposely wanted to go out and get this dirty. Uh, I have become much more of a trail runner the last year or so. And in fact, I've, I've been logging more trail miles than road miles. And I have been running in a variety of trail stuff, but I would say specifically in the past like six months, I've done more trail running in Hoka shoes than any other brand that we work with. And uh, I've worked with a bunch of and running with a bunch of different miles of Hoka. So I was kind of excited to see this new model come out and I really wanted to be able to do a fair assessment on it. So this is the shoe after 75 pretty pretty good trail miles out there we've had a bunch of rain here lately like on the east coast we've had some pretty powerful storms come through here so my my trail area is pretty muddy and gross compared to some other times i've run out there so it was a perfect opportunity to try this shoe because one of the things they build a shoe as is a really grippy nimble kind of shoe so um, this shoe is they're building this as a everyday trainer shoe but a much lighter option so um, you know, if you're coming from some of the other popular Hoka lineup shoes, like, like the Speed Goat, um, the Speed Goat comes in over two ounces heavier than this. So like on the men's side, this shoe is 8.5 ounces, and on the female side, it is 7.1. So if you're comparing that to like the Speed Goat, the Speed Goat is, is damn near 11 ounces on the men. So it does, it is, you can tell and put it on and go, yeah, this is definitely more nimbly pimbly. And also it's got a much lower stack height compared to any of the other Hoka Trail stuff out there. So again, if we're comparing it to something like the Speed Goat, the speed goat on both the men's and women's is 10 millimeters higher than it is here. And I, you know, I, I've been running in stuff like the speed goat or like a challenger or a Mafate. So like I, I'm used to sort of that big stack height, that big boy Hoka shoe out on the trail. There are a lot of people that when they come into the shop and put on a Hoka, like they're immediately kind of turned off by how much that stack height is. And then if you sort of visualize yourself on the trail, like there are people that put that Hoka shoe on and they don't feel like they'd be secure on themselves running down a hill or whatever and jumping over stuff and feeling that much stack height. And I will tell you, like a couple weeks ago, I happened, I happened to have two days where I fell back to back on the trail. And both days I was wearing a you know, Hoka shoe that had over 30 millimeters of stack height. And I do think I was running kind of sloppy. Um, but I do think some of that is, you know, when you get tired and, and maybe you're just not 100% feeling that run, if you're not lifting your legs up enough and not just being more aware that you have a shoe with a tremendous stack height underfoot, it's easy to get yourself a little bit off balance. So I was excited to try a Hoka shoe that had a lower stack height. Some of my favorite trail shoes are much more on that minimal side, but as I said, I've been coming into much more Hoka stuff on a personal level. Um, I was excited to try to find, I, I don't dare I say a minimal Hoka shoe, but sort of that's what I would kind of call this. I like that low light profile this shoe has, and it felt great running through the trail. And specifically, as it's been much more muddy, it was really nice feeling a Hoka shoe that I felt totally confident running through some bad stretches and not feeling like I was gonna fall on my face. I would say in the last couple of years of all of the trail shoes that I've been running in from Hoka, the Challenger has been sort of my go-to. This is the, the Challenger 6, and I really like this shoe. Um, it's light, it's got tons of cushion, you know, it's been a really great versatile shoe, but it really doesn't have the same grip that you're gonna find in this shoe. And I could definitely tell the difference between it, and I, I this is a, a Vibram outsole, and it's a light Vibram outsole, and that was one thing I was kinda curious about, because specifically looking at it, they were talking about how it's got this gecko, sticky feel to it, and I was concerned that all this exposed foam wasn't really going to give me that same grip that I was looking for, that I have in some of my higher profile, higher end trail stuff, from Hoka where I feel like it's totally totally vibrant outsole and not really a lot of exposed areas to it. So I was curious to see both how grippy it was going to be and to see if there's any issue with the durability of it because still that that is a big knock on Hoka and a lot of their stuff is that it doesn't seem to have the same last as some of the other brands that we have there that it seems to get beaten up a little bit more. And I haven't had this issue but I've had many a customer come back on challengers and have found that these sections here the exposed sections here have been totally beaten to crap after not many miles. So again, when I saw this and I, I would say, well, this, this is gonna be a similar situation, but I haven't had that. I haven't felt like I've lost anything as far as, um, as far as breakdown of the shoe and I feel totally still nice and protected running through some really muddy and, and some, pretty, some pretty gnarly trail stuff out there. I am kind of curious where this shoe is going to fall in line on the Hoka stuff because there's been a lot of changes in that lineup. Some models that have been popular are going away or modified. And we had a shoe like the Torrent that they brought in as like a trail racer. 
And the Torrent coming in at $120 is like a nicer price point if you're looking at this shoe coming in at $160. But there's definitely differences between the two. And I can see myself using this as more of a daily trainer, even though you know the price point might be a little bit higher and it's not gonna have that same quite cushioned protection that you might find in a higher stack height shoe from the Hoka family. But even doing stuff in the two, three hour long trail runs in this shoe, even though it has that lower stack height, I never felt like I didn't have enough cushion underfoot. I, did, I felt myself nice and able to manipulate and turn and nimble and jump and hop and all the great things that I wanted and go through tons of mud that we've been having down here and never felt like I didn't quite have enough underfoot. And I've had those days when I've been on the trail where like between some of my other trail stuff where I was like, boy, I wish I was wearing Model X because maybe that one has a little bit more cushion to it or a little bit more grippy. Going anywhere from going out there and running, I did a little, a little three mile trail race. I wore this and then I did, you know, three plus hour race through, uh, run through the mud and I could totally feel that I was nice and protected between both and I like the ability that I can put the same shoe and do both where typically before I really had a specific, if I was gonna be running on this type of terrain, I'm wearing this trail shoe. If I'm running this kind of distance, I'm wearing this trail shoe. I kinda of like that I can do a little bit of both in this. And I actually like the fact that it is a little bit lower profile. It seemed to fit my foot a little bit better. It's one thing I've kinda of noticed on some of the other trail Hoka stuff as well, is that sometimes the fit can be tough, specifically like on, on the last challenge or two. Like I really had a hard time getting getting the upper to feel nice and secure on me where I didn't have any issues coming out of the box with this. It felt nice, it felt secure, it felt like it fit my foot well. Um, and it also, it felt at first like I was worried it was gonna be a little narrow because it only comes in one width. After one run, I never felt like it needed to, like I was worried about any of the width, width control on this. It does have a gusseted tongue, so it is designed, it is kind of sewn in down there, so it's gonna try to keep a little bit more of the, of the muck and such out of your shoe when you're running. It also helps with that fit a little bit more. Also a little bit more energy, um, environmentally conscious on this. This is used for, the, the, the um, laces are used from recycled yarn, and they just put a little bit more energy into making this a little bit more of a environmentally friendly shoe, which is always nice, specifically if you're doing more trail stuff. You're outside anyway, so it's kind of nice that there's some nice vibes between what we're making and trying to protect our planet. Um, so anyway, $160, the Hoka Zanal, Really enjoying it. It's been a super popular shoe, so it's been kind of hard to track down. We'll have it up on our site, but availability has been really tight on it because it's been a new shoe from Hoka and it's been quite popular. So if you're looking for a more nimble, grippy, lightweight, low profile trail shoe, this is a great one to try. You can be doing a bunch of different stuff in it. You can feel fast. You can still feel protected on longer runs and you're not gonna have to worry about sort of falling on your face, which is nice when you're out on the trail. If you enjoyed this video, give us a like and subscribe. It's certainly, I appreciate it and it helps us find new people. And we'll have a link down below to our store. If you use promo code RUNMORE, just one word, you'll save 10%. We'll ship it out for free. And if you have any questions on this shoe or any other shoes, feel free to leave it down below in the comments and we'll do our best to get back to you as soon as we can. Happy running and uh, we'll see you out there.